What's up guys, Agent Mass is here today doing a recap of all of the 2016 Summer Wave sets. So taking a look from Akimu to Storbeast, you can see all of these sets together. You can obviously tell Akimu sort of makes zero sense here. He's just sort of the random guy there. And then you can see all of the beasts. And yeah, let's just go ahead and take a look at all of these sets individually. So first off, taking a quick look at Quake Beast, you can obviously see, you know, he is obviously sort of meant to be the sort of brute of the sort of the group of the beasts. My opinions have not very much changed on Quake Beast. I still kind of think of him the same way as just a bunch of concepts that just haven't worked out. And other than that, there isn't really much for me to say on Quake Beast. Taking a look at him in comparison to Onua, you can obviously tell he's a lot shorter, but he does actually look a little bit like a threat to Onua, but it is a little bit sort of jarring to see how much shorter he is than Onua. Storm Beast, in my opinion, was definitely the biggest risk taker of the wave with his function, which was obviously completely new, although I do definitely think it worked out. Still some similar opinions from before, just the only real difference that I have now compared to when I reviewed him is that I do think that poseability is a bigger issue than I did originally, although it's still not really that bad, although it is kind of annoying. Now obviously taking a look at him in comparison to Kopaka, unlike Quake Beast, he actually looks a lot more suited to fight Kopaka. My only real issue is that those claws don't really look like much of a match to Gopaka's gun and sword. Lava Beast is definitely my favorite smaller beast from the wave. I just feel like he's an all-around good set. His function is a little bit kind of meh in my opinion. There isn't really too much crazy stuff with it, but he really does pull off that lava look well. He is a pretty decent set. He has a good look to him, and I don't really have much problems with him. And really all my opinions are the same on this one as well. Now taking him in comparison to Tahu, you can obviously see some similarities there with that uh, sort of lava element or fire element sort of between them. And you can also see Tahu is a lot taller than him, although I don't really think that's much of a problem since Lava Beast does have those wings. Akimu's definitely the sort of odd man out of this wave, being surrounded completely by a wave of villains, being the only sort of uh, good guy or Toa, I guess in this case, of the wave. He is definitely a pretty good set, probably one of the best of the waves, definitely not the best, but definitely one of the better ones. And you know, just like some of the other sets, my opinions haven't really changed on this guy. Uh, main problem still exists, obviously the color distribution, not really much of a fan of that. And obviously that you kind of need another set to really get the full potential out of this, uh, the playability of this. Now taking a look at Umarak the Destroyer, he is obviously, you know, the best set of the wave, at least in my opinion, and as he should be, because you know, he is $25 while the rest of the sets are $15. Only thing I really want to note here that I did not mention in the review is with his lower legs, they cannot actually, you know, move backwards at all. You can move forward like this, but if you want to move backwards, you're always stuck here, and it's because of the use of this piece. I'm not 100% sure why they did this. I think it's um, just to help with stability purposes, but that is one thing to note. I also do want to note that I think they actually did do a pretty good job at um, sort of incorporating elements from Umrak the Hunter into Umrak the Destroyer, from sort of the legs to those shadow trap pieces to even this chain right here. There's a lot of uh, nice things incorporated from Umrak the Hunter into Umrak the Destroyer. Also, one thing to note, I also do think they did a relatively good job in incorporating some of the elements from the Mask of Control into his mask here, which is, if you don't know already, the Mask of Control, except for this is a more corrupted version. I think they did do a pretty good job here, you know, from going down to the mask, even to the horns, you can actually see a lot of close details. Well, that is it for my recap of the Bionicle 2016 Summer Wave sets. Overall, I think this wave was pretty good. It definitely does sort of give me that feeling that they kind of wasted the majority of the budget into the uh, Winter Wave and then poured most of it into Umarak the Destroyer and then had not too much left for the Beast in Akimu. But I still think that they got some pretty decent villains out here and they are relatively good sets and definitely a huge step up from the last Summer Wave and the Skull Villains. So that is pretty much it for my thoughts on the 
Bionicle 2016 Summer Wave. Go ahead and leave your opinions on this wave in the comment section below. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.